Greetings and salutations, dear reader. If these words are gracing your eyes, then you have had the good fortune to find the journal of Sir Edmund Rockwell, stupendous scholar, gallant gentleman, and explorer extraordinaire. It also means that it's entirely possible that I've met some unseemly end on this fascinating but exceedingly dangerous island that I call home. I suppose you could have also stolen it, or I could have misplaced it. In which case, please proceed to either hang your head in shame, or return it to me at once. Whichever is appropriate. Regards, Sir Edmund Rockwell. The wondrous properties of the flora on this island will never cease to amaze me. If I'd told my colleagues in London that I could create a concoction capable of erasing someone's memories, I'd be laughed out of the room and never invited to tea again. Yet here it sits, my mind wipe tonic. As usual, I've had tribal leaders groveling at the gates of Rockwell Manor just for the tiniest of samples. And for the recipe, oh, the bounties I've been offered. I'm not interested in their riches though. I have their protection, supplies for my studies, and all the time in the world. What more could I ask for? These tribal negotiations give me a headache every time. The Black Thumbs are mad that the Painted Sharks sunk two of their barges, but the Painted Sharks say that the barges were too close to Southern Haven, and they were perfectly within their rights to sink them, as per the Southern Isle Accords. Typically, neither side is willing to budge. What a bother. I'd just as soon mind wipe the lot of them and return to my studies. Alas, such is the fate of the island's most respected neutral entity. At least the painted sharks brought some fresh fish. Perhaps I'll side with them. Any chemist worth his salt knows the irreplaceable value of testing. Until the tonic has been rigorously tested, it is less useful than water. If only I could persuade this island's less intellectual inhabitants to see that tests on Mesopithecus serve well for early trials, but they are no replacement for genuine human subjects at later safer stages. By subjects I, of course, mean willing participants that are prepared to risk mild headaches and much less mild nausea for the sake of science. The Laughing Skulls offered rather less willing participants at one point, but I declined. With how difficult it is to find volunteers these days, I sometimes regret it. This Walker's impromptu visits are always an unexpected pleasure. After that headache with the sharks and black thumbs, a lively tea time discussion about the abnormalities of the Ark's ecosystem was precisely what I needed. Thank goodness I've managed to find an intellectual colleague that shares my love for the sciences. It saddens me to think that Miss Walker's charming colonial accent would keep her out of the more prestigious institutions and societies back home. Another of the Ark's wonders. It is a true meritocracy unlike any in the modern world. If Miss Walker and I could find and cultivate more minds like ourselves, we could create a true scientific utopia. This expedition to White Sky Peak has been just splendid top to bottom. The weather's been marvellous, I found excellent floral samples, and the local hunters had more woolly rhino horns than you could shake a stick at. I even managed to find volunteers for my latest experiment. It turns out that it was simply a matter of linguistics. Those who are wary of experimental potions are much more receptive to experimental food. Once my endothermic paste was rechristened Friar Curry, people were clamouring to test it. It has moderate nutritional value, so it's not technically a deception. It's just favourable language in the name of progress. That's all. Perfectly moral. Sadly, my Friar Curry trials cannot begin immediately, as the volunteers have a much more difficult journey to Rockwell Manor than I. After all, I couldn't very well carry every one of them on Archimedes. Yes, the Argentavis could clutch one in his talons, but I've always found the practice to be barbaric. The rest of the Ark may be embroiled in feudal savagery, but a gentleman always maintains his class and dignity. 
At any rate, I must have my assistants renovate the guest compound. Naturally, I would never let strangers into the manor proper, but there's no reason their stay should not reflect my civilized standards. Having readily available subjects has helped my experiments tremendously, even if their numbers dwindled over time. Not only was I able to curb the side effects of my Friar Curry's endothermic properties, but I managed to bring out an additional benefit of the mixture. Now, it also lowers the subject's metabolism, letting them go longer without needing food. Marvelous! I hadn't even considered that as a possibility. Why, with all I've learned from these experiments, I imagine that I could reverse the effects of the curry and create a concoction to aid survival in extreme heat as well. I must find more volunteers post-haste. I decided to seek out volunteers for my next experiment among the island's larger tribes. I thought that surely they would be willing to help after I patiently moderated so many of their frivolous disputes. How idealistic of me. Instead, they have yet another favor to ask. Apparently, there's a new tribe that's behaving rather aggressively, and no one can successfully negotiate with its leader. So naturally, they have turned to me. It's rather bothersome, but I can't touch their logic. If Sir Edmund Rockwell cannot reason with this Nerva fellow, then who can? Well, I found the report on Mr. Nerva to be rather exaggerated. And as an Englishman, one might imagine that I'd view Roman leadership with some disdain. Yet, in my experience, I found Mr. Nerva to be both honest and intellectually engaging. In fact, after a lengthy conversation, I dare say that Mr. Nerva has the right of it when it comes to this island's politics. As the Romans created Pax Romana, perhaps this new legion will create Pax Arkham. Even if it doesn't, I doubt it will harm my research. So I see no reason to interfere in this particular squabble. How can these tribal leaders be so short-sighted? Yes, the members of their respective tribes who volunteered for my Battle Tartare and Shadow Stake Sorte experiments have been experiencing prolonged withdrawal episodes, but can't they see that the benefits outweigh the costs? I create mixtures that can bring out superhuman strength, speed and coordination in ordinary men and they can only focus on the negatives. Simple-minded, a lot of them. They've even banned their members from partaking in my experiments now. Ridiculous! I'll not let them stand in the way of human progress. They may not understand the importance of my work, but surely my assistants do. I've decided to take a brief vacation from the laboratory. Well, I said I've decided to, but the whole thing was my assistant Isabel's idea. She noticed that I'd been quite ruffled lately and suggested that I take a bit of time to myself before rushing headlong into my next experiment. Such an observant young woman, that Isabel. She's somewhat lacking as a chemist, but she understands my moods almost better than I do. I dare say that an old-fashioned adventure will do me some good. Nothing like some rigorous recreation to clear the mind. Perhaps I'll go spelunking. Yes, a splendid idea. I know just the place for it. Remarkable. Absolutely remarkable. When I chose that remote northern cave as the site of my spectacular spelunking sojourn, I'd never imagined that I'd find such wonders within. Granted, I don't know what this specific wonder does exactly, but it's fascinating to examine. It's like nothing I've ever seen. I don't even recognize the materials that it's composed of, and it's constantly pulsing with some sort of latent energy. What is it? Is it unique, or are there similar artifacts just waiting to be discovered beneath this island's surface? My, how invigorating. Isabel was right. This was exactly what I needed. I feel like a young man again. Eureka! My theory was correct. The small podium at the base of the obelisk is definitely responding to the artifact's proximity and vice versa. Honestly, I feel foolish for not attempting this sooner. The stylistic similarities between the artifact and the obelisks floating above the island seem so obvious to me now.
Clearly, they were created within the same culture and era. Bizarrely, while both the artifact and obelisks are in exquisite condition, there are no other signs of this mysterious civilization. How could that be? What kind of mad society would gallivant about some remote island, building towering structures and stuffing knickknacks into caves before vanishing without a trace? I don't understand it, but it certainly piqued my curiosity. Well, I think I've gotten as far in my studies of the obelisks as my archaeological expertise will take me. A shame, really. This has been such a joyous little diversion that I hate to see it end. Ah, oh, Rockwell, you old twit. You've forgotten the origins of this little excursion. Spelunking! Did you yourself not hypothesize that there may be more artifacts hidden elsewhere on this island? Surely you can't give up before confirming that. No, certainly not, nor can I be expected to scour the Ark's caverns alone. Perhaps someone can spelunk in my stead. Better yet, perhaps someone has already spelunked. After many days of scouring the island upon Archimedes, and many more fruitless conversations with the witless savage sods that seem to make up most of this island's population, I have finally found the spelunkers I need. A tribe to the northwest called the Iron Brotherhood has apparently found three artifacts themselves, and it's clear that said relics share an origin with my own. In exchange for my artifact, the Brotherhood agreed to report any findings to me straight away as they continue their search. What stupendously good fortune! Now I can return to my alchemical studies with renewed vigor while they crawl through the island's caverns in my stead. Brilliant! The first round of trials for my new Lazarus Chowder have gone marvelously, but I've found it hard to maintain my enthusiasm. After all, I will never get truly definitive results with only Mesopithecus subjects. It's quite frustrating. Even so, I see now that Isabel was right. Having my assistants take part in the trials would be asking too much of them, and they're too valuable to risk so frivolously. If I cannot find human subjects from the nearby tribes, then I shall have to make do with trials on apes and monkeys. Perhaps it is finally time to capture some Gigantopithecus. I admit, there are times when it is useful to live among simpletons. For example, I was able to trade several gallons of my Lazarus Chowder to a group of hunters in exchange for an entire contingent of tamed Gigantopithecus, and they never questioned whether it had been tested on humans yet. Well, I suppose if they return with another batch of apes, then I'll know that Lazarus Chowder doesn't cause asphyxiation, won't I? It's not exactly a conclusive scientific trial, but I suppose it will serve. Unfortunately, all these primitive primates have given Rockwell Manor quite the pungent odor. Isabel said she's working on some sort of air freshener, but I hope she makes haste. I am perplexed. Even with an expanded number of test subjects, I just can't find the passion that I once had for my research. I truly thought that my recent adventure had lit a fire in my belly, but I constantly find myself losing focus. <sighs> Confound it all. Perhaps said adventure itself is the problem. Thinking about it, I'm always eager to discuss the obelisks and the artifacts I've found with my assistants, even when I'm not in the mood for research. There is a certain allure to them that I cannot describe, something that causes my thoughts to drift in their direction, like the pull of a strong tide. But it could simply be a passing fancy. I must give myself more time. I was ever so glad to see Miss Walker again. My assistants are clever in their own right, but dear Helena is still the only person that I feel comfortable diving into my deeper theories with. I fear that I may have kept her from getting a word in edgewise, though. Once I got going on the obelisks, why, I just couldn't contain my enthusiasm. My word, I really have become quite enamored with the subject, haven't I? Well, that settles it. After this next set of trials, I shall go check on the Iron Brotherhood's progress. Perhaps I can convince Miss Walker to join me. We could make a real scientific expedition out of it.
The latest Broth of Enlightenment trials have concluded, and as expected, I am disappointed in the results. Though the primates I tested it on showed increased aptitude for learning, I do not believe any of them have truly ascended to a higher level of intelligence. Well, bugger the little blight as I say. My assistants have almost finished preparing my supplies for my next expedition, and I have drafted a letter to send to the Iron Brotherhood ahead of my departure. Soon enough, I'll have forgotten all about the... Pardon the interruption, it seems that I have a guest. Now just what is Mr. Nerva doing here? I suppose I'll find out. I have always tried to maintain a strict neutrality when it comes to tribal matters, but then again, I have never had an offer this tempting from someone as respectable as Mr. Nerva. Not only has he offered to provide me with test subjects, but he has also expressed a mutual interest in investigating the obelisks. All he asks from me is that I provide him with reliable counsel. I would trust few tribes to be able to make good on such promises, but Mr. Nerva's new legion is perhaps the most powerful tribe on the island. Indeed, if they maintain their current trajectory, they may be the only powerful tribe on the island. His offer is worth considering, at the very least. After much deliberation, I have decided to accept Mr. Nerva's offer. True, the new legion is not beloved by many other tribes, but was Charlemagne beloved by his enemies? If my studies are to continue, I must be on the right side of history. As part of our agreement, I will need to travel with Mr. Nerva for a time, and wait to study the obelisks until the new legion has taken care of some smaller matters of foreign policy. As such, I have left Rockwell Manor in Isabel's charge. She will take excellent care of it, I am sure. Well then, on to New Frontiers! Excelsior! I admit, I have been rather coy with Mr. Nerva when it comes to the true nature of the obelisks. As a military man, the obelisks would naturally be more useful to him if they were some sort of weapon, and I have made sure to allude to that possibility from time to time. It is not as though I am selling my gracious host a falsehood. After all, I have neither any proof that the obelisks could be weaponized, nor any evidence to the contrary. Their purpose is entirely theoretical at this stage, and if twisting those theories will convince Mr. Nerva to march on the obelisks any sooner, then so be it. The new legion is finally on the march, not a moment too soon. Mr. Nerva runs his tribe exceptionally well, but their compound is positively spartan. I don't think I saw a single piece of decor anywhere. It certainly made me miss the comforts of Rockwell Manor, I'll say that. At any rate, we are apparently in pursuit of a barbaric beast queen. According to the men, she feasts on the flesh of her enemies alongside her army of monsters. Dreadful! Mr. Nerva is convinced that she is heading towards an obelisk, but I see no cause for alarm. No mere heathen could hope to uncover its secrets. And certainly not alone. I am absolutely astonished, shocked, flabbergasted. Why in the world was Miss Walker investigating the obelisks at the side of such a savage woman, and without notifying me first? Was she intending to discover their secrets behind my back and keep them all to herself? The nerve, the audacity, and after I treated her with such respect and civility. Well, Unfortunately for her, Sir Edmund Rockwell is always one step ahead of his rivals. Thanks to my partnership with Mr. Nerva, I can combine what scraps of knowledge she has on the obelisks with my own findings, and she'll be none the wiser. Why, since she is confined to a cage, I can keep my presence concealed from her altogether. Before arriving on this island, I would have dismissed the idea of a device instantly transporting a person from one location to another as complete and utter poppycock. Yet, that appears exactly what the strange platforms beneath the obelisks are capable of doing. Astounding. Yes, yes, there was a dragon on the other side. I'm sure Mr. Nerva and his men fought quite the heroic battle, but discovering another slobbering beast is trivial in comparison. Imagine. 
imagine. One could go from one side of the globe to the other in the blink of an eye. And I'll wager that is just the start of the obelisk's capabilities. I must learn more. I must. I'm starting to become quite cross with Mr. Nervous Impatience. I had barely any time at all to study the obelisk before we set out again. This time to that cave Miss Walker mentioned. I wonder, does he believe that she knows more about the obelisks than I do? Nonsense! Any fool could see that I am the superior scientist. Besides, I am his official advisor while she is his prisoner. She isn't even privy to my presence. Nonetheless, I feel compelled to prove my scientific mettle. Whatever is in that cave, I shall be the one to discover its purpose. The mysteries of the obelisks are mine to uncover. Not Miss Walker's, or even Miss Nerva's. Mine! In all my life, I have never seen so magnificent a sight. Mr. Nerva may be bemoaning the loss of his men, but I would sacrifice them a thousand times over to witness such majesty. I have never seen a night sky so beautiful. Somehow this place looks down upon the world from on high, as though it stands upon the peak of Olympus itself. And my word, the exquisite metal this place is made out of, not to mention that bizarre creature. It reminds me of the material that lines the obelisks, yet somehow more... alive. The very walls of this place seem to hum with power and possibility. I must find more information on this material. Perhaps one of these consoles will have something I could use. I'm not familiar with the technology, but I'm sure a scientist of my calibre could get something out of them with the little educated fiddling. Regards, Sir Edmund Rockwell. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video, and thank you to everyone who chose to work on this project. It's been really fun to film, and also sort of scary, and there's been a lot of pressure, but nonetheless really fun. And while I don't yet know what the reception of this video will be before it's released, I hope you all liked it. With Arc 2 having just been announced along with the animated series announcement, things are certainly a little jarring right now, um, and I'm still trying to collect my thoughts on everything. There was one person I didn't include in the credits, but his efforts deserve recognition. Thank you, Ras Clark, for your dedication through auditioning, and I can't thank you enough for having as much interest in this project as you showed. If you haven't already, please head over to Ras Clark's channel, which I'll leave in the description, since he does really, really cool ARC news. If you'd like to see the amazing person who built many of the best sets that we used, head on over to Chip's Arc Builds YouTube channel, which I'll also leave in the description. He is super awesome, he does really great builds, you guys gotta check him out. Thank you to every one of my volunteers, body actors, builders, uh, the one who voiced Sir Edmund Rockwell, Elliot Crossley, for choosing to work with me on this project. 
the future of this series is in your hands. So let me know how you like it so far. That's going to be all for me. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time. Bye, everyone.